well. Uh, my name is Bill Ferentz, and I am the senior designer and illustrator at the Black Sheep Agency. I'm Joe Skillman, creative director at the Black Sheep Agency. And if you don't know Black Sheep, we are a brand strategy and creative agency with the goal of activating people around things that matter. We're also a B Corp. Yes. Uh, and this is the first in a series of design chats called Offset Path, where we talk about brands and creative campaigns that Joe and I have built for social impact. <laughs> So in spite of the coronavirus taking over literally everything and turning our lives upside down, you have hopefully seen something about another really big deal, which is the census. Census 2020, um, it only comes around every 10 years and the data it collects helps determine our representation in government at all levels and it decides funding for like tons of social programs and infrastructure projects all over the nation. Yeah. <laughs> We're talking like disaster relief, um, parks, school lunch programs, Medicare, Medicaid, education, public transit, kind of everything. So it's stuff you've never thought of that might be relevant to you or your life is actually impacted by the census. And last year, Black Sheep was contracted by both the city of Houston and Harris County to create a creative campaign to help prevent an undercount. So Houston, like a lot of major cities, tends to undercount itself. And so we miss out on like an unbelievably large amount of money for that reason. It's like $1,000 per uncounted person every year, which is wild. <laughs> so big deal, fill out the census. Um, anyway, Black Sheep collaborated with a bunch of partners to get this work which I will list now, just in case they're listening. And because they're amazing people who handled all the other parts of making this campaign a success. And they are Lopez Negrete Communications, January Advisors, Kenneth's NLP, and Possible Missions. And anyway, as I said, Black Sheep's part in all of this was to develop the creative campaign, which is essentially the messaging and the visuals. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to try and share my screen so I can talk about this <laughs> while we are doing this. Okay. All right, let me know. You can see it? Yeah. <laughs> yes, okay. <laughs> um, so for the 2020 census for Harris County, we created the Yes to the Census campaign. Um, so as you can see here, the design, hopefully you notice this, um, is all based around this giant yes to census 2020 wordmark. And all the copy and messaging reflects this yes statement. So as you kind of like look through the materials, you'll see these yes statements um, repeated, like yes to healthcare, yes to representation, yes to communities. Um, they all kind of appear throughout the design work. Um, <clears throat> so it's kind of like a way to make the message build this momentum. Um, and you get to see what saying yes to the census really means. Um, so that's really cool. And then right away, hopefully you notice that we've used this bright yellow color consistently across um, all the design work. And then lastly, um, we were using photography of people and the city. So in this case, it would be Houston or images of Harris County. Um, so hopefully people viewing the posters has this connection to the message since they'll see kind of people that they might actually even see in Houston or like see on the street in Houston. Um, so we'll kind of talk um, more about this in just a minute, but I wanted to do just a kind of a quick overview of what we're gonna be talking about. Um, so in general, it's actually a pretty simple design, but it's really effective. And we could build it in a way where it's easy to use, which was kind of a necessity. Um, we're able to make these assets and share all these pieces out with our partners and outreach teams. So they're able to take these pieces and actually make posters or postcards or kind of like for any sort of event they might be hosting, um, but they can kind of make their own design work and pass them out at, on the street or at an event. So that's what we've got to talk about. I'm gonna stop my sharing now <laughs> and go back to you. Okay. Oh, thanks. Um, yeah. So what I consider to be our greatest talent or like Black Sheep's greatest talent is that we take 
this message that we define in a really easy to understand way. And then we like explode it out into a million ways for it to speak to the community or to impact the community, like accessibility, relevance, context within culture. Like we put a great amount of consideration into all of these things. Um, so, you know, it looks simple to see all at once, but we're going to talk as we go about how all of those things were considered. Yeah. Um, so I think that kind of covers the what and the why for the project. So I think we should talk about kind of the how we got there side of things. Um, and I'm going to start with that yes word mark that I was, that I showed and we can talk about. <laughs> um, because the sense is about, is about people and it's about humans. Originally I had thought that it would be great to have a human element. So I was imagining this sort of handmade yes mark that would be painted or drawn out in like a bunch of different ways across all the pieces. So initially I had actually created the can painted this yes mark and it had a sort of like this nice human element. Um, it looked friendly, but it still kind of had some like edginess to it. Um, and Joe, I had showed it to you and you told me this is, this is a fun, <laughs> this is a fun mark, but we want everyone to be united in this yes statement. So we should look for something that's a little bit more uniform, um, something that kind of works across all the communities um, and something that can be recognizable as part of the campaign because we're gonna, be need, we're gonna need to be using it in other languages. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, when you factor in three languages other than English and you have different yes marks, lettering style like people are going to be far less likely to see various pieces in their community in different places and make the connection that ah this is all one campaign with one message i have to stop um, you for a second because my internet cut out for a second <laughs> so oh no i have to repeat um maybe just um not from the beginning but just talking about how these are going to all be like one campaign with one message, just so I want to make sure we actually have it recorded. Yeah, have that in there. Yeah. Okay, got it. <laughs> Sorry to interrupt. You're good. We want people to see the, or sorry. People are going to be far less likely to see these various pieces and kind of spread out in distant places and still make the connection that these are all one campaign with one message, which yeah. is what we needed them to do. So we're sitting there and we're both just like staring <laughs> at Bill's screen and I've garbaged the one thing he was actually excited about. Yeah. <laughs> and um, at this stage, the whole campaign is just a word and a photo. <laughs> and it's just, yes, and like this random photo he's found and we're not happy. <laughs> and finally, I was just like, I have something. Um, and I had this word mark lying around that I built for something else entirely and it wasn't being used. Um, and I really liked it. So I kind of resurrected it and tossed it to Bill and was like, okay, let's see how distinctive we can make this. Because the whole thing was like, if this word mark is in Chinese, you know, which shares none of the same letters as the English word, yes, we still want them to connect it with the ones we're building in English. We want them to understand that this one mark is the same um, in all of the languages. So we had to come up with other things to do for it to start <laughs> to look uniform, even if the language changed. So yeah. anyway, side note, um, <laughs> I know, <laughs> I know that um, creatives sometimes get judgy about reusing old stuff from other clients or old ideas, but I am not one of those people. In fact, I think those people are super wrong because repurposing things is like the definition of creativity. All the stuff you've seen, places you've been, things you've read, people you've talked to, that is where ideas come from. Our ideas are not these epiphanies that explode into your consciousness from nowhere. They come from what you already have. So reuse what you have clearly i get very preachy on this subject <laughs> bill you say something <laughs> um well yeah so like i mean this other word mark you had 
like you could sort of just like done a concept and we didn't actually use it for anything else. So I kind of like to think of it as like, it's a sketch for something. Like I have a sketchbook and I keep a sketchbook of all my different ideas. And like, you know, some ideas aren't gonna work for every project, but you kind of can look back at this backlog of things you can, you have created and like see how you can use them for other things. So it's like, it's a sketchbook basically. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> um, and also, I think originally you had maybe had that mark set on a, just like a straight line, um, but we actually set this on more like a diagonal path. Uh, so it's a little bit more distinctive and kind of like unusual. And it was sort of like a good place for us to start, like get this to get the idea moving. Um, <clears throat> and this is also where I learned the offset path effect <laughs> in Illustrator. <laughs> Um, which is actually where we came up with the name for this discussion series. Um, yeah. <laughs> I feel like this is, <laughs> she'll ever watch Family Guy and there's that one episode where Peter is in a movie theater and he's watching a movie and he's like, oh, they just said the name of the movie in the movie. And <laughs> like that's what we've just done. Like this is <laughs> where Upset Path came from. <laughs> it's just, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, well, it's a cool name too, I think. We can probably get into that and maybe another episode, we can talk about the design of Offset Path. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Um, but um, I also just wanted to point out that like, I have been a professional designer for about 12 years now at this point, and I have had never used Offset Path until Joe taught me it. So everyone needs to stay humble in their careers because you're always going to be learning something. <laughs> Um, so, right, we have this yes word mark, um, we have it, it's a little bit more distinctive now, but then we kind of hit a wall again. Again, yeah. uh, because now we had a very workable word mark and a photo and no other pieces and no deeper concepts to make this thing more interesting or more relatable. And so we're doing this useless thing that we do where like I stand behind Bill and we both just stare at his computer screen. <laughs> yeah, you, you take on the hovering art director role. Um, but you kind of pointed out like, well, what if we make this into a sticker? Uh, yeah, that was kind of our pivot. Um, I was just like, what, what if the concept is that we now think of our new super distinctive logo slash wordmark thing as a sticker? And you start to use it like people use stickers, like to show, show blah, 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 sorry, to show support of something that they care about or something they're proud to be associated with. So like if we put it on top of someone's photo, right. it's not just a photo or just a poster, it becomes like this endorsement that they're making. Yeah, um, that's kind of when the whole idea really started to solidify. Before that, kind of like all we had was like one of those so simple it might be genius ideas, but it didn't really, didn't really quite have the legs to stand on at that point. Yeah, and yeah. So I don't know if you can hear me, but my internet just cut out a little bit again. No, Nexus was its beginning point. My, I think my Wi-Fi cut out again. Oh no, that's okay. Because I'm actually not sure if Nexus means beginning point. Okay. So, uh, <laughs> start that part over. <laughs> so, I had just said I had just finished my statement about it not having legs to stand on, and then it kind of cut out. Okay. So I'm gonna say it again. Okay. And cut it together. <laughs> okay. Um, before that. Sorry, uh, that was kind of when the whole thing started to solidify. Before that, we kind of had one of those ideas where it's like so simple it might be genius, but it didn't really have the legs to stand on at that point. And we can say that it was one of those so simple it might be genius ideas because it was neither one of ours. Our content strategist, on Alicia Sotelo, who was a poet that you can Google, um, was feeling inspired by Si Se Puede at the time, so that's kind of where it, it came from. Um, anyway, so we, we made our yes word mark 
always with an exclamation point, this engaging thing that could kind of live out in the world, sometimes as an actual sticker, sometimes digitally. It could be used by businesses, local politicians, school children, everyone. Yeah. And that's what we got really excited about was that the it could build a lot of momentum and it made it feel more like this like endorsement of action. So it's like, yes, I will be taking the census. Um, and the fact that it would be this, cons like have this, you know, it would be consistent and recognizable everywhere you see it. Um, people are seeing the same yellow. It's this like same distinct diagonal word mark. And people are going to start making this connection that the census for Houston, for Harris County is a positive thing. Um, and the photography kind of lends itself to this point too. We wanted to feature portraits of real people that you would see out in the community which kind of helps reinforce that the census is a positive thing. It's something you can trust. And hopefully we kind of see people themselves start to spread the message. Um, we kind of imagined that, you know, being everywhere. So we mocked it up to show kind of all these different things. Um, kind of one of the cooler ideas uh, was like a yard sign of that yes word mark, but all like the different languages. And we kind of imagined it being you know, shared and used by everyone, but like seeing that specific yard sign in like a row of houses, I think kind of helped sell that idea. Um, Cause you got to see like how powerful it could be, but it was still just kind of a, a simple message. Um, it's actually kind of a good segue to talk about how we presented it. Um, so we had our first presentation with our partners in this project and like when the first, so the first time we presented it, um, it was clear right away that this direction was the front runner. Um, the simplicity, the, the use of mostly real photos at the time, um, <clears throat> kind of just like helped really sell this idea. Um, and then even one of the research insights we were given really early on from our uh, friends at Lopez Negrete, um, was just that people largely did not have a very good understanding of what the census is and what it's used for um, or what they could get out of it. So the idea is that like this had this simple message, like the simplicity of it had a lot going for it. Um, I also wanna add that we presented a few different campaigns for this and they were like campaign directions um, and they were all like very cool and very different. And I would have loved to see like any of them out in the world. Um, but people really seemed to kind of be interested and got attached to this yes message, like the yes campaign. Yeah, no one really had any changes or edits, which yeah. was wonderful, but also really surprising. Yeah. <laughs> so the first presentations ended up being pretty easy, but I don't think at the time we realized how many times we would need to show the work. Y'all, we presented this so many times to the client, to the partners, to community organizations, to government committees. Yeah. Like, I think um, in every meeting, the phrase, you know who really needs to see this kept popping up in every conversation. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it is nice for people to recognize that the who and the how of a creative presentation really matters. So I appreciated that they wanted us to keep telling that story of why we built what we built and why we thought it would work. But there were so many meetings. <laughs> <laughs> but it, um, it really made me see how many lives this could affect. Yeah, that's, that's a great way of looking at it and very true. Because um, when you're addressing Houston and Harris County, you're not talking about a small city. You're addressing literally millions of people. Um, so the campaign needed to think about the inclusion of that many people. And again, um, I don't know if we mentioned this earlier, but um, put that into the perspective of this pandemic we're going through right now. Um, we said earlier that the census can impact funding for things like disaster recovery like when um, Hurricane Harvey hit. Now we're experiencing a crisis with job loss and overfull medical facilities. And the better we do with counting ourselves right now, the better we'll fare farther down the road when it comes to funding for these types of events. Like the census will impact events like this that happen. Yeah, that's really true. Um, and luckily for us, the census is actually online for the first time ever. It wasn't in 2010. 
at 2020census.gov, along with a crap ton of other information. So it's an appropriate social distancing activity. <laughs> um, it'll still come to your house via mail, no matter how you choose to fill it out um, by phone or whatever, because that's just how they do it. Yeah. Um, so if you've already filled it out and it comes in the mail, just ignore it, I guess. <laughs> um, and you should definitely fill it out using one of those methods because at this point in our pandemic, no one wants a door knocker. Yeah, so they're not they're not still doing that, right? Or not right now, at least. Uh, yeah. They so they've definitely put them on hold. They're right. not going back out until it's considered safe for okay. sure. But um, you know, fill out the census this month and any of the other ways, and you won't have to worry about it. Anyway, to pivot to more positive direction, I want to say <laughs> that seeing this campaign out in the community has delighted my little designer heart. Um, back when we were allowed out in the community, um, I got to see it a lot. It's just so sunny and yellow and there are murals and there were events and there are bright yellow t-shirts that people can wear with the Yes yeah. logo and the language of their choosing, which I loved. I love that they got those made. Um, all these groups and committees and organizations are using the bank of visual assets we built to share with everyone. Um, Mayor Turner has posted on social media using them. CBS actually talked about Houston and our census push a few weeks ago and showed a lot of the materials we built. And that was awesome. That was really cool. Um, we had some of those census shirts in other languages and I, I, I mean, I, I might've brought back the office honestly, but I had a really cool one. Um, that was set in the Chinese word mark. It, it's just, it, it's really cool to see how the campaign kind of shifts to be in other languages, but it still like feels super recognizable. It's really cool. I love seeing it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, good so, job. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I think we should talk about the stuff we learned while working on this, because that's the fun part. <laughs> okay. Yes. Uh, well, we learned about you and the offset path function in Illustrator. That's yes, true. <laughs> um, yeah, it, it's, it's worth noting again that Bill has an illustration degree and I have a communication design degree and we're constantly teaching each other dumb stuff in software <laughs> that we should like maybe already know, even yeah. though we've both been employed as visual designers for 10 plus years. <laughs> um, anyways. Mm -hmm. Moving on from making fun of Bill, um, I was just kind of constantly surprised by the number of things that people don't know about the census and things I didn't know about the census. Like I thought for some reason that only permanent citizens needed to fill it out. It's actually just anyone living here regardless of your status, which like totally makes sense now that I think about it. I didn't know that children go uncounted a lot of the time. People are like, oh, well, they're a baby, so I didn't include them, but <laughs> you're supposed to. It's very literally anyone living under your roof as of April 1st. Yes. Um, something I didn't actually know or understand was that the Census Bureau is legally bound to not share census data with anyone, um, and that includes any other branch of government. And that is for 72 years after the data is collected. Um, we, like, we can kind of see like the big numbers in the data. So we get to see like how many people there are and where they live. But we're not getting any other much like detailed information other than that. Um, which is why the citizenship question was kind of a fiasco last year. And it was kind of like a little weird um, because no personal information, no names, would be made available until I guess it would be 2092. So, I mean, I'm glad they didn't include that question for a few different reasons, but it's kind of funny to think that like the data actually isn't going to be available until that far in the future. Yeah. But I mean, if you didn't have a reason to know that, why would you? Yeah, <laughs> 72 years, really, yeah. you're like, I would not know. Let me clarify that. They're using the basic data now, <laughs> but it's that more specific data 
Yeah, like they can see the overarching large scale demographic type stuff, yeah. like what they call big data, yeah. but no indi like individual yeah. person that said this and did not say this and that's available. Yeah. It's not available until 2092, which yeah. is wild. So, so you should fill it out now <laughs> because that information will be used soon. <laughs> the big numbers will be used big soon. Numbers. To get us money and funding yes. and other community things, but no one will know your name. Yes, exactly. Thank uh, you for clarifying that. Um, okay. What else? Um, I have a good one. Okay. I remember when we were first brainstorming and we were like, yes will be a great word because we know that that's translatable into any of the languages we'll need to use. So we did, we handled Chinese, Vietnamese, Spanish, and English were the four languages that we produced everything in. Um, and maybe other organizations use the assets we built to produce things in even more languages. Um, but we were like, surely everyone has a word for yes so this will be a good thing to call the campaign oh my gosh so we were wrong <laughs> it's kind of like well when you're speaking about the census um so now you need this different word that's actually 10 words that implies both consent and enthusiasm like when you're using the words like you know in english it's yes to the census but when you start talking about you know, saying yes to the census in Chinese or Vietnamese, it's like going to be a completely different word, but it's also like a whole statement that implies that you will be participating in the census. So it was a big learning moment, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, never again will we assume that there are yeah, simple yeah. words in every language. <laughs> yes. Um, I also assumed, um, having worked on translation in the past, that we would be providing build files, like design files, for translators or translation services to plug in content in all of the languages other than English. And that totally did not happen. So once I left the office, kind of late in the evening, it was like 7.30, and there was Bill with this poor Chinese language translator who was awesome, by the way. Yes, was uh, Jennifer was her name. Jennifer, okay, yes. So wonderful Jennifer, <laughs> just like sitting by Bill and looking over his shoulder and like helping move symbols around and proofread because obviously we sure as heck can do it um and there are some interesting learnings about color too both the cultural symbolism and then the literal yeah. printing of it yeah definitely um there were a few discussions about like using yellow and if like creating materials targeted at specific audiences like if we should change the color so at one point it was like we're gonna use yellow and everything but then we kind of learned that like yellow interprets a different way in the Chinese culture. So then someone suggested using red. And so we kind of had this back and forth a little bit about like, do we keep the yellow color? Should we change it? Um, so in the end, we ended up just kind of going with yellow color. We did a lot of testing and focus groups with like everything. Um, but so we kind of had a lot of input and feedback to base our decisions on, but it ended up being a pretty big topic of discussion. <laughs> Um, so there was that on that side of things, but then on the technical side of things, um, we knew people would be printing these in kind of a bunch of different scenarios, like at home, in the office. Um, so we ended up using 100% yellow and 100% black um, in the art and in the design, just so it could look somewhat consistent across the board. Um, and somewhat consistent is... Well, we ended up with that's yeah. a good price. Um, it's amazing the number of shades you can get out of what is supposed to be 100% plain yeah. <laughs> yellow ink, which comes default in most every home printer. Okay. Um, but so, something we had to do specifically with this campaign was essentially to mistake proof it. Mm -hmm. Designers don't usually have to build things that much for non-designers to use where they don't have the same software you have or any of the tools that you're using or like fonts are a big challenge that kind of thing yeah um but for this we kind of had to well just because so many different people and businesses and organizations 
are going to be using as materials, um, we kind of had to build them in a way that was like, how, like, what can we build and make for people, make for someone who only knows how to use Microsoft Word? Or what's someone who only knows like the Microsoft Office platform? What are they gonna do with these pieces? Um, which reminds me actually, is that I learned on this project how to make a true monotone, like a black and white monotone <laughs> um, in Photoshop. Um, I didn't, I mean, I knew like we'd have some print shops printing this, um, but I didn't know that they would only be using two colors of ink. So like, I'm, I'm used to like, you know, CMYK, four color process. Um, but I had to learn how to, you know, use the monotone um, filter or effect in Photoshop and make images all 100% black ink and then make sure all of my files were set up with 100% yellow and 100% black. So I had to learn that as well. It's like simple things. <laughs> I remember you doing that. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was surprising. It's been a while since I've had to make something two color for printing. Or, I mean, so it's like, we kind of, you know, we're making things for people to use, you know, we're simplifying things for people to use in Microsoft Word, but then like, for like, so they might even have like a learning curve there, but then I, I'm also learning things on my end. So it was like a lot of sharing skills and learning information. It was very, <laughs> it was good. Yeah, this is a big undertaking for us. Um, <laughs> okay, total pivot. Uh, one of the things that surprised me really early on in all this was that we were going to be designing census content specifically for the LGBTQ community. Right. And I didn't know why that would be an undercounted group necessarily because it's so demographically broad. Hmm. Um, but I learned that A, a lot of LGBTQ youth go uncounted because they are homeless yeah. or somewhat transient due to being kicked out of their homes, which is awful. And B, that this is just yet another government form that doesn't very successfully define your identity in a lot of ways. Um, I mean, also just lots of people aren't that jazzed to hand over any information to a government they don't necessarily trust, which that was true of pretty much every undercounted yeah. group, mm -hmm. um, which is why our message about the Census Bureau not being able to share your information or the 72 years thing yeah. was such a big priority. For sure. Um, that part of it hit me kind of hard because this, uh, the LGBTQ community is one that I am part of. Um, so to see that not all gender identities are going to be listed as responses on the census is frustrating, you know? Um, a lot of people are going to feel overlooked or kind of maybe feel like they're not actually counted, which for this community is, is really important. Um, what I can say though is that like completing the census is going to make a huge impact on our community in regards to funding for housing and healthcare. Um, it'll make a difference if we all fill it out. And that that's like a big deal. <laughs> and it's like, it is, you know, it is a little frustrating because as tired as we are, um, representation is just, I think it will, it's going to be something that we have to keep fighting for. And my hope is that like, you know, in the next time, the next time we're in the census, like that question or that response that um, for gender identity will be listed. And that will be a huge, that'll be a huge deal. Um, I do know that the National LGBTQ Task Force has been working on a few ideas to spread awareness though. Um, and something that they are working on is uh, something called the uh, Queer the Census campaign, which is cool. That's awesome. Yeah, that's really cool. Um, so inclusivity and representation is a good topic for a lot of our communities actually. Yeah. Um, I did one presentation where this Korean woman, uh, kind of one of our community activators, stood up and was almost in tears because she was overwhelmed at the thought of having to figure out a way to build all of this stuff in Korean, which was not one of the four common languages that we pre-produced assets for. Um, and we built some resources for making it easier to translate things, but that's still, a lot of work and so she had stood up and was just kind of asking like what 
what is there for the Korean community? And it was a bummer to be like that. This is the best that I have for you. There are some translation documents that are helpful. Um, but anyway, what you're saying is applicable here too. Yeah. If the community that you belong in has not historically been that visible on the census, the more people you can get to count themselves, the better your odds are of having the federal government include more languages next time or be more considerate of people's, you know, various experiences or challenges. Yeah. That's, that's really important to say. Um, something we learned kind of the hard way is that there was not at the time we started building this at least, uh, a dependable location for all the questions we had about the census. Um, there was a seminar early on actually with the census, uh, with the census employee who flat out told us that people wouldn't be able to define non-hetero relationships on the census. But when uh, everyone on the team of Black Sheep started taking the census or filling it out online, we realized that you could. Um, so throughout the process, we would kind of have to like constantly revisit pieces that we'd already built in multiple languages and then have to kind of adjust them as we were getting more detailed information about the census itself. Um, yeah. So yeah, it was a little tricky. <laughs> If you, if y'all are designers and you have your files organized anything like us, you have all of those file names that are like version one, version two, version three, revision one, version three, revision five, version like, and we're yeah, yeah we're that's the realm that we're in. So the numbers got pretty high. <laughs> <laughs> yes, um, I think I had the most fun because I was in more of the committee and like community presentations than you were where. We would make this presentation about you know the eight million different messages you can choose from and that you can use your own photos and the toolkits we assembled and all the media outlets the information was going to go out on and you know the decks we built to collect translations and even more languages and there was always someone who would like ask this question where they got really weirdly specific like they were trying to stump me and they would be like Okay, but um, what if someone lives in a giant tree house and they have no television and no internet? And I would say like, well, eventually a door knocker will come to where they are and talk them through it. Because the door knockers are thorough, by the way. They don't just yeah. door knock at the easy places. They will walk through snow in Alaska and they visit homeless communities. Like they get it done. Yeah. <laughs> and then the person would be like, but what if they don't answer the door? And eventually I was just like, oh, uh, well, you know, it sounds like you have a very specific person in mind. And um, if you know this person, please, yeah. you know, get creative and maybe help them fill out this. Right. I think that's all we're really trying to say here is that like, tell people about the census, help them fill out the census. Yeah, tell, tell freaking everyone you know about the census. Yeah. It's a group effort. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yes. that's, that's the whole campaign. Um, yes to the census. Yeah. <laughs> um, All right. Well, um, Bill and I are around for questions. Yep. If you know you're able to find us on social media, we're not we're not hard to find. Um, and thanks for hanging out. Yeah. I guess. Thank you. <laughs> Stay <laughs> safe. <laughs> Don't hug strangers. Yell at them about the census from at least six feet away. We'll see you later. Yeah. Bye. Cut. Okay. <laughs> Stop recording. <laughs> Stop recording.